Pocket. Uh, pocket robber. Sorry. You know, when you make one thing for too long, you start making mistakes all over the place. So just bear with me there. We have here this particular one should go also into the four. And as you can see, we have a very, very cool image in the middle of the of the pool table. I don't think that a, a real pool table would have this kind of image in the middle because everybody would be distracted. But anyways, um, you know, in the name in the name of coolness, we're just simply gonna go ahead and do it. This particular one in here is another tribal sign, and what I'm gonna do with it, and what I did already, is that I pass it through the table to make kind of a hole in there. So. Um, let me go ahead and show you real quick how the how the two files look when when we put them. You know, let me go ahead and reopen out of this mask, uh, 3ds Max, and open the other file so you can see what is the idea behind it. Let me just go ahead, open it up, and. And the last saved file that I have, this is what you ha what you get. So you have this particular hole in the middle. And actually, I still had to work a little bit because I had some some problems in there. But in general, we have this particular nice hole that we have in there. So this is the table how it's gonna look at the end or similar because we did it from scratch. And oh, here you see that. We have a different color in there. Yeah, it's what I meant. You know, when you start working with something with a little bit of time, you actually grab your time to um, work on some things. Before I showed in here that we put a black color, and then I saw that it didn't work out that well. And it seems to me that I had the same at the same issue that I had at the beginning. That I created the thing, and then I saw it didn't work out that well. So I just simply went ahead and changed the color. As you can see, the um, I did kind of a work in here on the outside and it's pretty much the same um, I just showed you the same things and in here as you can see let me show you now let me go ahead and show you the images actually let me go here I have it in the reference images I have a vector as you can see I created in a, a vector out of an image so I grabbed, went to the internet, download some tribal signs. This is the, the sign that we're actually going to use to create the hole, as you can see. And that's that's a simple image. And uh, But this one in here, it is... Oh, it's opening Photoshop. I opened the wrong file. Well, it doesn't matter. You can see it anyways. Oh, you can't, because it's a path. So, here. This is the image, the, um, the original image. It is also a JPEG. And when you create a vector image out of it, well actually you create a, sh a path out of it, then you're able to import this type of files onto 3ds Max. If you just go to import, you have the option to open the Adobe Illustrator images. So it is kind of cool because then you can just simply create a path out of an image, um, very complicated one, then you bring it to 3ds Max and you can create very cool stuff like for example in this case we have you know this table it looks very nice and let me stop showing off with that one let's just simply go ahead and finish this one so in this case we're gonna grab this particular um, let's just go out of that particular selection I'm selecting something in there and I cannot select this and in this case what we're gonna do is that we're gonna scale it down a little bit because for the other table it was okay but for this one it is too much so I believe that is okay there let me see that I believe that is fine and uh, right now let's go out of my mistake so let's just simply go ahead and grab this no here um, let me make a loop selection in here let me make sure that I'm selecting correctly here so 
here and here. And uh, you know what? I'm making the mistake. It is just the inner ones that I have to just simply change the color in this case. So let's just make it any of them. Oh, I'm selecting it. Just need to change it. That's it. So. So as you can see, yeah, there you go. We actually created basically everything from scratch. It is the same table that you saw in the other file. Um, and again, you can go to the customize menu, go to files, and select increment on save. And that way, whenever you save, you get a number at the end of the name. That's how I got how I got the savings. How you saw it, and in here, I was saving this one as a a stamp and now we're in tempo one so um due to the fact that we're making the the tutorial I haven't actually saved it as much as I would do when I'm really working on something. So that's why we're just in number one. And in this case you know how to do this you just select the table. Let's just go ahead and select the table. Right click well not right click you can go to the create mode um menu. Um go to compound probably and in this case start picking and basically that was it sometimes I have to warn you and actually it looks a little bit cool but sometimes when you use the the pro boolean you get some errors in this case um, maybe one of something in the machine actually because of the fact that in here let me just go ahead and undo this what is happening is that let me get the, the table let me Deselect the dragon, and actually the problem is that we attach this the other way around. So instead of dragon, I have the table. Let me go ahead and undo all of that. It doesn't matter. Let me do it that way. But the problem is, and I wanted to show that. That's what I'm gonna actually. Why I'm going to go back in time here, is that um. Let me add the last last thing in here. Let me see. I, I believe I crashed it. <laughs> so let me try to save it. OK. And let's open again 3S Max. The problem is that I wanted to show that um, when you're actually creating a Pro Boolean and you have a, um, a border that it is not open. Um, like for example, uh, sorry, when you have an, a border that is open, um, and that's the thing. I'm actually making some of things in here. Let me just go up here. I believe that it saves it in out of backup here, and we have recover here for temp one. I believe this is the one. Whoa! Wow! It is actually really crashing it. So it seems to me that we lost part of our work in there. Let me go ahead, try it one more time, and if it doesn't open, then we will have to go back in time and remake the whole thing. So open, up, out of back recover for this one and it's actually not giving me a a thumbnail yeah yeah the file is totally broken so what we can do is go to 3ds max and that's why you have to save very uh, very carefully actually uh, very frequently of that kind of issues. Let's see what to do. Let's just grab the one that I finished because we were just right there. So um, what I wanted to show is that here, um, no, let me open before that time. Let me see around here. What happened when 
you create a pro boolean and you get this kind of black uh, you you get you lose some information about your your um your faces actually what we lost in there was the information about here the IDs so what is happening is the following let's grab the table and um, let's turn off the symmetry modifiers and this is the problem let me just simply put this alone in here and what happens is that this border is open so when you assign the pro boolean command to this particular thing that has open borders it can create a bunch of issues so easy way to fix it or to try to fix it is closing the borders before you apply the pro boolean or try it as well with the boolean command instead of a pro boolean let me see if that's what I did at the end because sometimes I just don't like to spend too much mo too much time on it so let me just go out of the selection the things that edit poly modifier has a control O selected so when you go ahead and check on this table well well I convert it to a little bit poly again but it seems to be that yes that's what I did I just simply grabbed it and tried it with the boolean instead of the pro boolean and it right away you you fix those kind of issues um for the tape for the balls let's just simply do that very quickly um everything else is done as you can see I extruded a little bit this particular pocket edges I actually um, chamfer them up and um, I extruded those edges as well but I don't think that is needed that is just part of you know the looking good thing and just for the sake of time saving because we have been I have been just showing how the things were doing for the table itself not for the balls or the or the sticks I'm just gonna do it very quickly I'm just gonna grab um, a, a one that doesn't have it doesn't have them let me see that let me just go ahead and yeah, open this one. Um, the way of doing it is very simple. Well, we have one in here, so we're just gonna go ahead and copy this one up over and over again. No, and I'm just going to show two of them. Let me get this out. Copy it. Okay. And the first thing is that we're gonna convert this to an editable poly, so we can select the faces and for the small ones you have two two kinds of balls right the one that we actually have um the one that has small white um circle and the ones that are big white circles so let me just go ahead and open that up real quick let me just simply go ahead um go to open that image and the reference images let me just simply open this one up so we have two kinds small circles big circles and um, for doing that it is quite simple actually this change something here default lighting is gonna be easier for all of us and let me rotate this thing 90 degrees maybe this side yeah so, yeah, 90 on the X. So, um, let's just go to vertex mode, select this particular vertex, and convert it to face. And then we just simply grow the selection as we want it. There's the simplest way that I can come up with that. So, let me select this particular one in here and this one here um, control click on this particular um, icon is gonna just simply do what I just did with a right click just gonna convert it to vertex and then just grow it I believe that is okay for the size that we're looking for maybe one more let's see no that is too big so and grow there and just change the ID for that so we just go ahead and go to the materials ID and this is number two let's set it to number one and this one is in here number two so you have two IDs here 
and when you go to the material editor um, you can create a multi sub object for that particular um, ball in this case so let's just go ahead and uh, go to standard multi sub object number two okay one is gonna be the white and of course the other one is gonna be the color and if you have a reference image from the internet and actually I'm gonna add this image in the in the tutorial files you can just simply know which colors are you gonna add to each ball so yellow for for the number one two two is blue three is red purple and as you can see they repeat themselves so after you create one of them for example if you create number one just duplicate that ball and you already have number nine the only difference is that you're gonna grow the selection a little bit more um, how we did it we're gonna grow the selection a little bit more and you know this particular circle in the middle for example you leave that in there and then you make a grow selection on the sides so or let's let's check how we can do that very quickly let me just go ahead and show it number two is actually the outside we just grab and put a yellow on it and I believe something else has that yeah so interesting I thought that only the um, the ball had that so let me just simply go ahead and paste that in and as you can see you have a yellow ball then you grab mess around with the values you're only seeing this because we have the lights to the default lights that is creating that kind of color in this case now the yellow is too bright so you know you just play around with the colors until you get what you need then you can just go ahead and paste the number one in there with whichever method you prefer and then on this particular case let's for example again let's make um, number nine in this case we're just gonna copy that ball and let's go ahead and change to this and I'm gonna go to isolation mode and this particular case well you know what let's do it the, the bad way so let's just simply put the default lightings and select these two vertices here am I only selecting two vertices? no I'm not and convert to faces grow them not that much and as you can see we already have this you know that's exactly that's how I um, uh, what I would say that it is the easiest way to do this kind of thing and especially if you're actually trying to um, to just simply make something that resembles them I believe this is a good way to do it as you can see right away let me go ahead and put the normal sh we have white circles yellow on here and then you just paste a circle in the middle with the number so let me go ahead and go out of exit isolation mode and as you can see let me see Z for zoom extends and as you can see we have the number one and number nine very simple very easy that's the cue ball it doesn't have any color so in general if you take a little bit more time to go for those then just simply go ahead and do it the other thing to end up with this tutorial is that we're gonna create actually the um, the plane sticks that one is a very easy to do thing you just go ahead and do the following which is and actually I'm having troubles oh that's why because I had this set up that way so let me grab this particular box and that's not the one that I wanted to select and just simply hide it that's it so you know when you're actually working on a project you use a lot of ways to actually experiment with the lighting and stuff in this case I had a box at that point I didn't end up with that box at the end of the work so again you know experimentation is your friend let's just go ahead and go to the top view so basically the only thing that I have to do is to simply go ahead and create a shape line 
I toggled the angle snap and created it. Note that um, I have two options in here. I have enable in viewport and enable in rendering and what that does is that it actually creates the rendering effect of a three-dimensional object. You can right away see it that it's a 3D object and you can just simply convert this to an editable poly go ahead and delete this particular face in here because it is not created correctly and on the other side as well oh in the other side it was not created at all so what we're gonna do is that we're just simply going to let me zoom onto it so we have here oh it is created the only thing is that it is flipped so we just go to the edit polygons flip it and if you have the edit poly modifier on what is going to happen is that you you just simply press F and you can flip it right away but in this case we have the edible poly so I'm selecting this particular border in here I cannot see it that much because of the hardware thing and then I'm just gonna cap it and that particular polygon we're just gonna flip it again so edit polygons flip there you go and to this particular um, thing what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna have gonna go ahead and create um, I'm gonna add a modifier I'm gonna go to par parametric deformers and apply a taper modifier and actually I'm doing it wrong because it should not be to a specific face it just goes here we apply a taper to the whole object we select the X in this particular case and as you can see it's already getting the shape right so we're just gonna go ahead select the center and push it backwards well not that much I believe that is okay and the amount we're gonna change it so it is not that tiny so I believe with that we have something resembling a the, um, the plane stick and actually you have to just simply collapse to it so as you can see uh, those objects are pretty easy to get you know the basics on I'm not making a very detailed one if you want to create one that is more detailed well go ahead and take your time um, but I believe for this the main topic of this was actually how to create the table itself and um, I believe I covered everything already at the end for example in this particular case I have everything set up um, let's just go ahead and open the one that I finished so in here you will be able to see that even though the, um, the balls and the sticks do not have um, a lot of details you can actually get a, a decent shot especially when you are in a far away position like for example like this because they just need to resemble what you need our main point of focus here is the table and that's why we actually spend so much time um, modeling it and and actually applying materials to it even though this tutorial is not about the materials itself it is more about the modeling the table but as we wanted to make some renderings out of it um, we need to take our time for the materials and actually the lighting as well and that's what I'm gonna do right now we're gonna actually um, play a little bit with the lights and uh, even though this is not 100% the, the the highest quality for for the for the you know the stakes and the balls I believe they are enough for our purpose because um, the shots that I'm gonna make are at most like at this distance and usually you cannot see the number the, the, the numbers um, anyways so um, right now what I'm going to do I'm gonna open another file because in this one we uh, I have an animation for the camera and that animation is like 1000 frames long and that's not what I needed at the end I, I ended up making some changes to that and um, fixing some of the issues that the mesh had like for example this particular problems that we had in here um, I ended up working a little bit more on it and when we look at it let me go to the camera again I cleaned that up and I put the scene a little bit brighter and for that what I did was that first I put um, a, a material to the set as you can see it is kind of white now um, 
and this particular light in here it is I just put it as a bat light as a backlight it is very low this is only 67 candelas compared to the other one which is 1500 um, those values are not from real life um, values that much at all I just simply put them in a way that you know it looks good um, these two lights are gonna be our um, like ambient lights they are not the main lights I'm gonna maybe put a spotlight or something like that you know that um, pool tables they have spotlights on the top usually depending on the bars and stuff um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a spotlight and 